name is Philip Ring. I'm a hairstylist and uh, educator. I love creative color. I love teaching, I love inspiring. I call myself the inspired hairstylist. And 2015, I just started to kind of realize that, you know, the most unique that you can be is, isn't by copying other people or by copying aspects of other people. It's taking things that you're already good at yeah. and not being afraid and having the self-confidence to put those back into use for yourself. Through trial and error with other things like the stuff that I was doing with pixelated hair, like you have to do it. You have to do it because you will never get over it if you don't. When I started social media, it was just to have a portfolio of my work. And, um, you know, I, I started to become social with people on social media. And it was really great when you, when you first start a platform and, and you're working with people that are also first starting and you build relationships and the people that are really consistent at it really grow. And so I have friends that I've seen, you know, M Mustafa from Hair Salon M. We, we were both at under 10,000 followers together and he's at well over 200,000. When I am posting on Instagram and when I'm posting on Twitter or Facebook, I'm very, conscientious of what I post and sometimes it feels like you have these handcuffs on like you want to be a little crazy but you're worried about losing opportunities and so Periscope for me was a way to like release everything I live alone I, ha I don't have anybody around and so Periscope for me was a way to kind of let a little bit of that crazy out and so I got really well known on Periscope before hairdressers were on Periscope I was um, going to Disneyland and taking people on rides with me. I was um, dancing in my apartment. I, I even um, secured my phone to my ceiling fan and it would spin around and people were coming to me for antics. And when brands started following me on Periscope, I was like, oh, this crushed me because I couldn't, I didn't have a space for me to do that anymore. The reason that I, that I kind of stepped away from it was because I had money, but I wasn't paying my bills because I was periscoping you know I had like I wanted to be on there all the time like I, I have friends from periscope I have people that know me from periscope that used to just say Philip I was unhappy in my salon and I would watch you and it would make me happy because I feel like I'm in another world and periscope I watched the Pope drive through st. Peter's Square I in the next second, I'm watching a guy feed koi fish in England. In the next second, I'm watching a guy parasailing on thing. And, and I know as hairdressers, like we've adopted Periscope because it's a visual medium, but there's so much more out there. I watched a guy um, who is, I didn't know who he was at the time, but he would, you would post to your Instagram, he would find a picture of you and then put butts on your faces. And the cool thing was like, he's like a funnier dye producer. And I didn't know that, but through watching him manipulate things, I started learning how to do my own um, logos and how to cut photos and, and crop things. And so Periscope was, was and still is something that I use for way more than hairdressing. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a passive watcher more now than before because, you know, but I, I just, yeah, I, I find that, that like we need to, we need to reach out and we need to, you know, use it for so much more than what it is. I've watched doctors doing eye surgery, which is pretty creepy, yeah. Yesterday I had a conversation with Christopher Benson, maybe it was the day before, and I told Christopher, I was like, man, I've never told you this, but, and through social media, I've been following him, and I just said, look, Chris, I just have to tell you, you your work is the work that I wanna do, like, I, the work that I do sometimes is just happy accidents from trying to create, recreate your work. I haven't figured it out yet, but you know, through seeing him on social media and the, and the stuff that he's done has, has inspired me. But he said, Philip, he, he said, just like you're following me, I've got my eye on you. And like, that was like mind blowing to me because you know, we're both sharing and the caliber that I look at him and then that I see him at is, is on a level that I've never, you know, and to have him already know who I am when I'm walking up to him for the first time ever is just, is just awesome. Well, you can't make things happen if you don't try. 
you know, all of the things, like even just starting a new social media platform. I was just sitting in a class with somebody who I heard in 2011 started something without any followers. And if you're considering starting something or, or doing something that you're scared of, like everybody starts at point one. But what we don't see when we see 200,000 followers, 300,000 followers is, is that journey that that person took, those really awkward posts until, until you find what works for you. And so, you know, I think if, if it's social media that you're looking at trying, you have to kind of give yourself a way to just find your audience and, and you know, put yourself out there, learn how it works. Because Periscope, um, you can just passively broadcast on Periscope, but if you know how to ask for people to follow, ask for people to share the broadcast, ask for the hearts, give yourself, you know, goals, you know, that you want to reach, like, it has to be very calculated. And, and, and in social media, just in general, I think, understanding how apps work and how people connect is, is a very good way to, um, to grow. And if you're scared of something, you have to start so that you don't be, so that you're not scared anymore. When I was in beauty school, the biggest advice that I heard was don't make friends. Because those friends that you make in beauty school hold you back. If you're a passionate, motivated person, you're always gonna have people wanting to take from you. When you're a hairdresser, the biggest advice that I could give somebody is be kind. Be kind to everybody because meanwhile, you're sitting next to somebody who looks, who's wearing an outfit like a beekeeper. Like, who knows? You know, you have to be kind because with social media, you don't, you never know. So like I, I was sitting next to a guy last night who was the creator of shellac, you know, like the chemist of it, you know, you have to be Dark kind to everybody. I love that guy. Yeah. He's just, he's just awesome. He's a hippie guy. Like, and I, and it was just a conversation. I was kind. I, I spoke to him. I talked to him. Be open. You know, if you're not the type of person that talks, then better not talk than say something bad. You know, I don't know. Like, the aha moment that I had was like seeing friends grow from just being in the salon to being lar being kind of the skies are the limit, I guess. You know, I've seen people grow in many different ways and become creative directors for companies. And, and, and there were times when I held my tongue and today I, I'm so grateful for all those times when I understood that people are going through things and, and whatnot. So, just be kind, love people, and hold your tongue because it's such a small beauty industry and one day things can change overnight, you know, for everybody, you know. And so if you, if you take those words of advice, you can grow, you can be happy, and, and people will always, and, and give, like, give your time, volunteer, because meanwhile I'm holding the camera for somebody for the last four years. I've, I've just been an, a video assistant so that I could afford to get into hair shows. And now, all the people that I interviewed are the people they know who I am now, and they watch me, and they, they're friends with me, and, and you know, it was just because I was I was kind, and yeah.